say hello to my rookie. Hi y'all, I'm Amber and today I'm going to be doing my weekly wrap up for February. This is the last one for this month. This month and this year is going by way, way too fast. Already we're on March, like, but Since it is the last day of February, I will not only be talking about the books that I have read, the books that I am reading, I will be also talking about my TBR. Before I actually get into this weekly wrap up, I wanted to talk about some other things. Specifically, how many books I was able to finish this month. I was able to finish 10 books with the help of the Anne Green Gable novels. You all know I've been rereading them and because I'm able to get through them so fast, I've been able to read a lot more than I normally would during the month. And so out of the books I have read for the first time, only two of them have been a success. So that in itself is pretty disappointing, but the two books that were a success I absolutely loved and so I'm not too horribly disappointed with my reading month considering that I love reading the Anna G. Gable novels and so I'm not like hugely disappointed but hopefully the month of March will be better for me. Now let's just get on with my wrap up. The first book that I was able to finish this week was Here on Earth by Alice Hoffman. As some of you may know, I really enjoyed and loved her book called The Dove Keepers. It was the first book I've ever read of hers and so I've been looking for more of her books to read. This one just seemed to jump right into my hands when I was at the library bookstore and I kind of wish it hadn't because it was a bit of a disappointment to me. But let's first talk about what this is about. So Alice Hoffman has decided to take Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte and use the themes that are in there to create her own story with the question and the idea of what would have happened if Heathcliff had gotten the girl instead of her actually dying. I did not realize that when I picked this up because I had only read the front leaf so I just thought it was about a mother and daughter who go back to the mother's hometown and her dealing with her past and finding a way to deal and move on from it. That's what I thought it was and instead it became a story that felt very much like a ripoff instead of an original story. Alice Hoffman's writing was the only redeeming thing for me in this book because as I said it really came off as a ripoff. She aligned her story so close to the original that it didn't feel like it was her own and with the whole idea slash question about Heathcliff getting the girl it was very confusedly answered and laid out for us. I just didn't understand how it would have ended up like that. Considering the fact that this woman, March, if she was at all clear in her head, mentally stable, there's no way she would have chosen to go back to Hollis. There was no way in hell she would have done that because she had a good life. She had a successful life. There's no way she was going to destroy her life by going back to this man who she obviously knew was bad, bad news. So it was just really troublesome to read this book just because I loved Wuthering Heights. I mean, Wuthering Heights is always dark and creepy and I loved it for all of that and I loved it because, you know, we're I don't know if we're supposed to really like Heathcliff or not, and I don't like Heathcliff, but but I like the idea, the the thought of like trying to like understand Heathcliff because he was so damaged that he became this person, and you have to kind of wonder like was he that way from the beginning? Was it because of her brother? All this stuff, and so I really loved Wuthering Heights, but do you see it? I don't know, treat it in this fashion was a bit disappointing and I really have issue with this book because of that. I really don't like reading books that are like retellings or anything like that of another book and even when I was reading this in back of the book it sounded like she wasn't really trying to replicate it but she ended up doing it anyways. So this one only gets 1.5 stars. The next and last book I was able to finish this week is the sixth book in, in the Anne of Green Gable novels. This is Anne of Ingleside by Ella Montgomery and I absolutely love it but I am going to tell you now I have so many books on my TBR pile and 
I've bought a lot of books lately and so I've been thinking really hard on how I was going to handle that because I want to get back to only 50 books on my TBR before I reread. So I am ending my rereads of these and rereading in general until I get there because I have so many books and I don't think I'll be able to finish my TBR pile by the end of the year like I was planning no matter how hard I do it. So I just have to focus on my books that I haven't read. So my TBR for the next month will reflect that also. But I absolutely love this. I gave this five stars. I'm not hugely disappointed that I'm not going to be finishing the last two books in this series because they weren't my favorites. It focused more on her children. It focused more on her children and the scent book. And then the last one, it was all about Rilla. And although I have grown to like that book much more now, I still don't find it to be one of my favorites. So I'm not super disappointed, although I would have liked to finish them out. The book that I've been working on throughout this past week is The Wine of Angels, the first book in the Merrily Watkins mystery series. This one t introduces you to Merrily Watkins, who's a reverend and has a daughter. She takes over the figurage for a town in of Ledwardine, and this town is steeped in cider and secrets. It has a supernatural twist with a 17th century cleric being accused of witchcraft and she gets caught up in the dispute about a playwriter wanting to use this story for this fair of sorts that they're putting together and she ends up being the one who has to decide and there's this whole mystery that surrounds it like was it because he was a witch or was it because he was gay, what really was the truth, and 200 pages in, and it took 200 pages for anything to really start happening. When I read the prologue, something really dark and creepy happened, and I thought I was in for a roller coaster, an exciting ride, but once that first chapter hit, nothing happened. It basically felt like a small time life documentary of two people coming into a smaller town and adjusting to the small town life. That's basically what it felt like to me. And I was really frustrated because although we were being introduced to the story about the 17th century cleric and these the players in this whole story, I just wasn't enjoying the reading because that was not what I was wanting. But finally, at the 200 page mark, I feel like something is starting to happen and things are starting to connect. Hopefully, hopefully, if things start going backwards again, I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle this, but I am determined to finish this book. And now I'm going to be talking about my TBR for the month of March. I always choose five books for my TBR and whether or not I finish them doesn't really matter. The ones I don't finish will just move on to the next month. The first book on my TBR is The Name of the Win by Patrick Rothfuss. This is about Quoth, who is telling the story to a chronicler, and he's talking about his crazy life as a wizard. That's barely touching the surface, I feel. Just from the 100 pages I've already read, I feel like there's so much more to the story. I know a lot of people think there's not a lot that happens in this book and I've heard that they don't really like Quoth himself, but so far I'm finding him very interesting and intriguing and yeah, he's a bit of a brat as a kid, but I like him as an adult and I think that as he, we see him growing up, I'll be able to understand his adult self. I am absolutely loving Patrick Rothfuss' writing. It's so beautiful and poetic. And I am just looking forward to being able to delve into the story and the writing and this world, which I'm still having a little bit of a hard time understanding in a way, but I think that as it goes, it's going to be explained. So, so far, so good. The second book is Harvesting the Heart by Jodi Bicolt. As you all know, I love Jodi Bicolt. I have almost all of her books. I just need two more to have a full collection of her works. This one is about... Paige, whose only few vivid memories of her mother is her 
basically abandoning her and now she is a mother herself and those memories make her doubt herself. I am really looking forward to being able to read this this month and hopefully I will be able to enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed a lot of her other works. Third book in my TBR is The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Westfist. This is the second book in the King Killer's Chronicle. And if I like the first book this will be read, I believe I will like the first book a whole lot more than just the like. I have this feeling that I'm going to fall in love with it just because his writing is so wonderful, the story is intriguing, and Quoth is a character, you know. And so I am expecting to be able to move on to this one. I am not going to talk about what it is about because one, I do not want to spoil myself for what happened in the first book and besides since it's a single book it would be kind of silly of me, right? This one is The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barbary. This was translated from French I believe and this is about a group of people who live in a hotel and it's about how their lives all intersect somehow I think. Not really sure but I do know it's about these group of people's lives and I've seen this at Barnes & Noble like I think it was like six to eight years ago and ever since then I had this on my TBR and so I finally finally have it and I am now finally going to read it. The fifth and last book that I'm going to be trying to read in the month of March is Passion and Prejudice by Sally Bingham. The title in itself caught my eye and I decided to take the risk of reading this because of that and also because it's a memoir and ever since I read Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert I've been wanting to read more memoirs and so this caught my eye when I was at the library and it was on the free book shelf so I just grabbed it up. It's about the Bingham family. The daughter is telling you about all the family scandals and stuff like that and so I'm very interested because it sounds scandalous and you know, it's like one of those guilty pleasures kind of things, so that's what I'm kind of expecting out of it. We'll see how much I enjoy it by the time I get to reading it. Thank you all so much for watching and keep warm.